All right, so let's talk about the game plan for the week ahead. Clearly the market is hot. We have now had a solid week plus of some incredible action. And I mean, I'm talking about nearly daily 1000% movers. This has been impressive. And I have been so thrilled and so proud to see some of the PLs that people have been posting. I mean, I've, I've seen some of the biggest green days from traders in our community that I've seen in a long time. So this is really awesome and great to see. It just shows that this is the time that we have to step up to the plate and try to be aggressive. So that's what I've been doing and I've been trying to lead by example because the thing is we have these windows where we can step up and where the market's hot. And it's, it's your choice how you wanna trade it. Obviously, if you're early in your learning curve, if you don't have a big profit cushion, you've gotta be more conservative. If you've been trading for a while, and you've got some experience, then you're gonna recognize that these are the times that you've gotta step up to the plate because we know that there's gonna be cold periods in the market, and what helps me weather through the cold periods without getting desperate and getting too aggressive is when I have a nice cushion from the previous hot streak. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is sort of at the end of the hot streak, take a couple of huge losses where you give back like half of the profit you made when it was hot. And then you're going into a colder period where it's gonna be super hard to recoup those losses. And then you feel like you're in a drawdown. So in this episode, I wanna make a game plan for the week ahead that looks back on some of the big moves that we've had and sort of sets at least what my intention is gonna be for the coming week. I'm trading from the Caribbean, which is fine. The internet here is great and the view is terrific. The weather is awesome. So I'm escaping a little bit of the cold from New England. And my plan for the most part is gonna to be to trade every single day as always and to trade until it starts to cool off. It, it, like I wanna trade and be aggressive, but once it starts to feel like opportunities are sort of drying up, then I'm gonna call it a day. So I don't wanna be trading for eight hours a day while I'm traveling, but I wanna to try to make the most of this window. So if we have days where it's hot, you know, until 11 or 12 or one, then, you know, I'll, I'll probably try to maximize on that. And, um, you know, look, the, the, these types of days in a single day, uh, it, it, I can make more than I might make in, you know, a month of cold market. So 10 hot days can, you know, I mean, that, that can really put a big dent in the PL for the entire year. So I want to try to be aggressive. All right, so let's go downstairs. I'm going to go on my computer station and we're going to start to break down the trades from last week and sort of project forward what the goal is going to be for this week. So I'm going to take you on a tour on the way down to my office. I get this nice scenic walk. You the beach all the way along here and then over here you've got this um, this is the French side of St. Martin way back that way is the Dutch side and one of the things that I like about St. Martin is the fact that it has great internet and the fact that it's a super easy flight from New York so from JFK it's uh, easy to get here and that just makes it so you know it's no big deal to come down here for a week or, or even a long weekend and uh, just enjoy the sunshine. All right, so this is the traveling trading station. As always, I've got one main laptop, two USB monitors. This all packs in my carry-on. It's super lightweight and works really well. As you know, probably from my uh, recap on Friday, this is a brand new computer that I bought here in St. Martin because I accidentally forgot my laptop charger at home and Anyways, I couldn't find a laptop charger, so I had to get a whole new laptop. So this is going to be my laptop for this trip, but it's fine. Uh, we're going to power it up, and I'm going to start going over the trades from last week and the goal for the week ahead. Okay, so we're going to start by uh, pulling up the continuation scanner here. So, oh, there it is. So I want to look at the continuation scanner because this is usually the way I kind of search for recent big moves. And the, the number one with the biggest range right now is H-O-L-O. -O. This is the stock on Friday that ended up, it was incredible. It squeezed from like $33 a share to 100 bucks. I mean, a 300% move on a stock going from like $2 to, you know, whatever, six or eight. I mean, that, that happens, but having a stock go from 30 bucks to $100 is incredible. 
So, so anyways, this is our, this is our leader right now, um, in terms of just biggest range in the last, you know, two weeks. And for me, it's not one that I'm super interested in considering for trades for the week ahead, just because at this price range with bigger spreads, the risk is really going to be pretty high. I, I just don't think it's going to make sense. So uh, realistically, unless it breaks over its high, I'm not going to expect big, big volume to come in. Having said that, if we get a couple of days of pullback, we could form a bull flag on the daily chart, and then this might be something that I would consider. So a bull flag is a maybe, but that's not going to happen on you know Tuesday morning. So it's going to take some more time to form. Second leader, BMR. Well, BMR already had its big day, um, which was the day that it went all the way up to $34 a share. So that was on Monday of last week. And then it had, um, you know, a couple of days where it tried to put in some moves pre-market, but it's pulled back a little bit. If it even popped up a bit on Friday, you know, this one, if it gets over 16 or 17, could work. And if we look back at INBS, IN as in Nancy, BS, this is the one that sort of started this round of momentum because I had this really big day, then it sold off. And then it came out with this day that was like even bigger. That was Friday, uh, February 9th. That was when things really started to pick up. So, you know, I, I don't think we should write off any stock that popped just because it sold off because that's what happened on INBS and then it ripped. So BMR, it's still one to keep an eye on. It, we could get more action on it. Um, DTSS, this one. So this is our third leader on the continuation scan. You know, this one, it again had a huge move, incredible, all the way up to 20. It's starting to form a bull flag on the daily through red candles. First daily candle to make a new high. This one could give us a technical breakout. So there's a possibility we can get a trade on this one um, at some point next week. That one's worth watching. HKIT, I didn't really like it at all. It was kind of thickly traded. So this one, um, it did bounce up a bit uh, on Friday, but I, I don't think I would go back for that. CHNR, this one, again, big range in the last two weeks. You know, we might get a bounce on it, but at this point, it's already back down at $1.77. It's a little cheap. So probably going to leave that one alone. MGIH, I didn't like that one. RNLX, not so interesting. BGLC, some of these have gotten a little too cheap. SYRA, if we sort this by float, this might be an interesting view. Uh, VLCN, super low float. Um, looks like it popped up a little bit on Friday. Maybe one just to keep an eye on. That's eh, not so sure about that one. I've traded a couple times. It's not that easy. PRSO, another one, trade a couple times. INBS, yep, that was the one that gave us that really big move. DBGI gave us a big move. HOLO, also, you know, it was interesting, but not sure we're going to. So the thing on HOLO was that, again, we got that first pop, and then it just kind of held up until it started to creep through the highs. So that's a setup definitely to keep an eye on that one's that's got a lot of potential uh, it's already happened and played out on holo but we might see it starting to form on others so i think the game plan in general for me is that um if you look at the stocks i've traded in the the last you know couple weeks each day for the most part i was trading different stocks um i missed trading on thursday because i was traveling flying down here to say martin and you know i i was planning on trading at the airport but Number one, I was flying JetBlue, which I I I gotta tr correct myself and my language. Um, I I effing hate JetBlue. <laughs> I cannot stand JetBlue. But I flew JetBlue because that was the only flight that was nonstop to St. Martin from JFK. I guess on that day, I would much prefer to fly Delta. Um, I mean, I, it's it's not like I was flying Spirit, but JetBlue is just not great. So, anyways. <laughs> The reason I bring it up is because my plan to trade on Friday was based on the fact that I, in my head, thought I was flying Delta. Um, and I just, you know, I, I just forgot uh, that we were actually flying JetBlue. So it took about three times as long to get through security, TSA. Even though I have pre-check and global entry, it still takes forever. It's a total, 
they're just they don't have their stuff together there. And then you get in there, you don't have the sky. Anyways, so I did not. By the time I was finally in, it was getting to be two, like eight o'clock, which so I'd already missed the seven a.m. sort of spot, seven to eight, which in this market has been hot. And then that's when I realized I didn't have my charger. So I was like, you know, yeah, one thing to another. So I spent the rest of my time on my phone trying to find lap laptop stores and stuff in St. Martin. So anyways, missed that day. But these days, um, all of these days, I was, for the most part, trading different stocks. It was jumping from stock to stock to stock. Like whatever was moving, I was jumping and trading that. So, you know, ended up with a phenomenal week last week. Um, let's see, 20, so 38, 40, 50, $60,000 in four days. That's awesome. Um, we had one red day earlier in the month uh, back here, but still super solid month um, as it sits right now. We've got, you know, two weeks left. January was a solid month also, three red days, but still a good month. So anyways, um, I think on Tuesday morning, my plan is going to be continuing to watch what's popping up. It's been tricky because, you know, a stock will pop up like CPOP, CPOP, and initially, you know, you don't know how high it's going to go. Like, is this stock going to go, this stock went from $1.50 to seven dollars it pulls back and then it pops up to 850 like that's an impressive move that's awesome but initially and it went fast which shows you if you weren't getting in it pretty quickly you kind of were chasing it or missed it but then there's others like um byu i think it was um on friday that was it friday no maybe it was thursday uh, or maybe i'm thinking of a different symbol Anyways, um, you know, there's been some others that pop up and then just do like a dramatic reversal. They don't hold up. So like this kind of move, pop from $1.70 and then all the way back down. So what's the theme? You know, which are the ones that are making the big moves? Well, I guess if we look at um, CPOP, what was the float on it? Um, like 1.3 million shares. That's a very low float. Um, OCG was another one. What was the float on that? 2.6. You know, so I, under five, perhaps. What was HOLO? Uh, that one's under a million. That one's very low, too. BMR is very low. So, you know, I, I think, yeah, so uh, that maybe that's, it's definitely part of it. Um, DBGI, we know that was a low float. Um, that one's right there. 700,000 shares. INBS was low. You know, but there were some that were a little higher that still made pretty big moves. Um, COGT made a big move. That one's like 63 million. Not not nearly as big as some of the others, though. So the CCTG, you know, that was 11 million. MSAI, BGLC, LUNR, 9. HKIT, which I didn't like, 5.5. JX, JT, 5.4. So, you know, I think when it comes to figuring out which one to jump on, um, a float and rate of change are probably two things to look at closely. If it's moving quickly, that's obviously interesting. LICN was moving quickly, but the float on that was closer to 10 million shares, right? So 7 million, 8 million. So in theory, it would take seven or eight times as much volume to have a similar move as a stock with a 1 million share float, right? Supply and demand. So the bigger the imbalance, the bigger the moves. So you're going to have those big, big imbalances on the, the stocks that have low supply because it doesn't take a lot of demand to create that, um, that imbalance. So, you know, that's probably the thing to keep watching. Uh, and, and the way I'm finding these is high of day scanner, top gainer scanner, penny stock scan, not as much, uh, right now, but the top gain scan and the top, uh, and the high day Momo scanner. So when I see a stock pop up, boom, I'm pulling it up, I'm opening up the chart and I'm looking at it and asking myself, is this one that I can trust? And you know, how much do I think it's going to move? And when I see it moving quickly, I'm, I'm jumping on it pretty quickly. So that's what I want to see rate of change. My plan Tuesday morning will be, um, you know, probably sit down around seven, seven thirty. I mean, yeah, there, there, 
were a couple days where we saw action before 7, but that's not very common. Uh, 7 a.m. is when retail traders traditionally come online. That's when the brokers allow retail trading to begin, like, you know, that for the most part. While there are some brokers that allow trading earlier, that's not the majority. So volume, you know, between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. is always light. And it can be a little bit of an illusion when you see a chart between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. that made a big move because a lot of times when it's on super light volume, the spreads are really big. And it probably wouldn't have been feasible to take any serious amount of share size on it. So you probably wouldn't have been able to make a lot of money anyways. Uh, so yeah, 7 a.m., 7.30, and then going into 8, 8.39, it seems that we've had kind of two waves. One wave is uh, the pre-market moves. And when they kind of start, we'll see usually one stock that gets super, like a lot of focus, a lot of attention, get a super big move. And then when that one starts to fade, another one will pop up. And then when that one starts to fade, people are jumping from stock to stock to stock. So very kind of, you know, frenzied trading. And then things kind of cool off. And we wait for that second move, which is after the open and has been between like 10, 10 a.m. and noon time. So between 10 a.m. and noon, we'll kind of start looking for that second possible move on another stock or maybe one of the ones that was strong from pre-market and see if we can capitalize on both, you know, the pre-market momentum and then momentum at the, you know, after, during the regular trading session. Uh, some of the momentum during the regular trading session has been a little bit tricky because of um, the higher degree of algorithmic trading, but still there's been some great opportunities with some really strong profit potential. So we'll be happy to trade um, during that time as long as we're seeing some good good momentum. So that's kind of my game plan, you know, as it sits, as it stands right now. Uh, it's very much going to be sitting down in the morning and seeing what looks good, what's moving. I do want to be thoughtful about the fact that uh, you know, I've had some really nice days here and it wouldn't be hard to jump to with 12, 15,000 shares in my first trade and then lose 50 cents and be down 7,500 bucks and be on my biggest red day of the year. So those first couple trades, I want to try to build a cushion, you know, get myself up a thousand, 1500, $2,000, not do anything crazy, just build a cushion. And then once I have a cushion, if I'm feeling it, then step up to the plate, like lean in a little bit. But I need to build the cushion first, you know, I just, I fear at the end of the hot streak, um, having that day where on the first trade I go deep red and then on trade number two, I try to take a swing for the fences to recoup those losses and I'm way below that max loss. And I'm just like, oh my God, I just gave back a lot of profit here in one day. So I'd like to avoid that. And that means uh, I've got to be careful on my first couple of trades. Focus, focus on building my cushion. And then once I've got the cushion, at that point, lean in and step up. So number one job is getting myself a cushion on the day. Once I have a cushion, then I don't mind risking the whole cushion and going back to flat. But I want to avoid big red days. And something I commented on um, in Friday's episode was my technique for reducing or minimizing drawdown got about 12.5 million dollars of profit here uh, if we look at the win loss expectation you know you'll see it was sort of like slow profit slow profit and then we had the boom during covid when it was just like insane and then it kind of slowed down again during 2023 2024 which i mean it's fine look i'm fine with making six figures a year the years where i'm doing millions of dollars it's going to be, you know, a bit more rare. And when it happens, I'm going to be grateful for it. And then, you know, we'll adjust and go back to normal. The thing is right now in this last week, you know, I just had the best week I've had in probably a year plus three more weeks like that. And we're starting to see this pull away to the upside. Right. Um, but regardless of the equity curve, um, you've got $12.5 million of profit here. And the biggest drawdown that I ever had was right here in 2021, which would have been right here. I mean, it's barely a blip. You can barely even see it on this chart, but that was the biggest drawdown I ever had. It was uh, right after GameStop. But last year, for the most part, um, and in the last year, I've kept my drawdowns to less, less than $20,000.
And I think that's really solid. That's good risk management. You know, to have $20,000 green days like I had on, um, you know, some of the days last week, you know, you might be thinking, oh man, he, he must be risking ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 in the red to have those type of green days. And I'm not, you know, I have red days, but I cut the losses fairly quickly and then I walk away and move on. And on the days that are green, it doesn't start with, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't start with me basically like hitting a home run necessarily. It's just steady progress. I mean, this one, this one was pretty solid 6,000 and then, you know, but just steady progress. So that first trade, I probably started with relatively small size and I was like, okay, if this can work, I'm going to add to it. And I was able to add to it. So this is my strategy. It's a strategy designed to mitigate risk, to keep myself consistently making money. And, you know, for what it's worth, um, I try as much as I can to keep myself out of drawdowns. You know, I don't want to be in long extended drawdowns. So if we go, you know, let's see, just 123, um, you know, through today or whatever. And then we look at detailed and we go down and look at win loss. Um, you know, these drawdowns, they're brief. I bounce back pretty quickly, you know, and I'm back to highs. But you can see here, this is where I'm starting to pull away right there. You know, that's a meaningful, that's a meaningful curve. I had a nice little stretch, you know, back here in January of 2023, right there, about a hundred grand. So to have that starting to happen again here, that's exciting. That's really exciting. And this is a, you know, this is, I, I feel, this is something I feel good about. I may not be, and I'm not, I'm not the best trader by any means. There's, there's people out there that make a lot more money than me that are better traders. And eh, for what it's worth, I don't know if total profit is the judgment of a good trader because you could have someone who's very reckless and makes a lot of money and is arguably not a very good trader, but has gotten lucky a few times. Anyways, um, regardless of how you want to define it. There's definitely people out there who are both better than me and make more money than me. But the consistency is something that I strive for and is important to me. And that's, um, you know, the, that's, that's kind of my focus is just to be generally consistent. Yeah, red days happen. Keep them tight. Move on. And to be ruthless about cutting the losses. And I try to lead by example with that. So anyways, with things starting to pull away here, like I said, you know, one more week like that, we're up here at, you know, 600,000 and another two weeks like that, we're up here at 700, 800,000. And now it's like, whoa, okay, something, something is happening here. Um, why is the market suddenly getting so juicy? Um, you know, the overall market, the S and P is, is at all time highs. It's just broken highs recently. You've got crypto Bitcoin doing well. Um, there has been a fairly strong correlation with the performance of cryptocurrency and the performance of small cap stocks, which I wouldn't sort of expect, but it has been the case. So just interesting, um, and notable. That was probably one of the reasons 2023 was hard though, because FTX collapsed and then, you know, it just took the wind out of the sails. So it could be because crypto is speculative and small caps are also speculative. It could be that there's sort of the same people trading both, uh, even though I personally don't trade crypto. You know, I know a lot of people do, so that could be part of it. But uh, and I think, you know, the, the thing with the beginning of this move on INBS, you know, we had INBS, which it just was super strong and it didn't really make sense that it would be as strong as it was on this day that it went from $3 to 11 or whatever. It just was super, super strong. And there were some big short sellers that got like smoked on it. And then, um, Oh, what was the one oh, now I'm trying to remember. Um, let's see. So let's just hold on. Let's just look at this for a second. Um, got to back this up for a second. Oh, now I'm trying to remember which which was the stock that went to 50. That was BMR, right? Let me see. No, this one went to 36. Um, was it Holo? H O L O. I'm trying to remember which one it was. Maybe it went to 50, but I know I'm looking for the one. Uh, I think it was Hello. Let's go back. Yeah, this was the one. So this, um, 
Right. So this on February 7th, you know, this might have actually been kind of the beginning because you had people who were swing trading it short. And look, I, I get it. I mean, we're all trying to make money. So, you know, it's, it's no hard feelings. I mean, if you want to trade a short side, trade a short side. But there were people that were just adding, 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 and they got blown out. So, so this is what I sort of speculated at the time. Um, I knew that there was some traders that got blown out. Their accounts are gone. They now have the, the banks coming after them for money because they blew out their accounts so badly. That's what I speculated. And, you know, a, a, a group of those traders who are super, super aggressive, who just hammer everything to the short side, I mean, they actually, you know, they, they could single-handedly bully some of these stocks if they're really trading them with, like, hundreds of thousands of shares to the short side. So all of a sudden, with those traders gone, right, the, the people that were sort of holding back some of these stocks aren't in the market anymore. And then, you know, now some of these stocks that previously they would have bullied and, and, you know, held back possibly through naked short selling and other things you're not supposed to do. Now they're not there, you know, so we're seeing these big moves. And yes, it's true that a lot of them are retracing. Uh, So, you know, you could say, oh, well, you know, these are retracing and I, all I have to do is keep adding and just leave myself room. But It's always a question of how long can you afford to hold this while it's going against you? How long can you afford to keep adding? Don't forget HKD that went up to $2,500 a share. Didn't make sense, but it did it. Think about ZJYL. ZJYL went up to $500 a share. Didn't make sense, but it did it. And the market doesn't care. You know, if you're negative on the position and you lose a million dollars or 10 million, doesn't care. There's no refunds. That's final. You know, it's gone. So with this stock, you know, people shorting it at four and five, and the next thing you know, it's at eight, it's halted up at 14. Now it's at 20, 24, 30, boom, there's some more people gone. And yes, it did come back down. So you just have to be really careful trading the short side. And I think what we're seeing is that people are being more careful, which is why these aren't being held up as much. They're running. And then once they roll over and the top is in, then people start looking at a short versus the high. It's like, okay, this is the high, boom, I'm going to mark that out and, you know, look for a short off that level. But some of them have been continuing higher. I mean, you could have looked at this and been like, okay, there's the high at 16, boom, I'm going to short this, stop, it's at the high. And then boom, next thing you know, it's at 30. So if my uh, speculation is right about Holo taking out some big short sellers or, you know, even some funds, market makers, um, no, not necessarily market maker, but like a hedge fund that was trained at the short side. Uh, you know, that could be, that could be part of why all of a sudden we're seeing things um, opening up more. I speculate, you know, cause I don't know, but um, it's just trying to figure out what changed. And when we look back at the moments where things began to change, it was like, what were the events that happened? And it was like HOLO and a couple other stocks that kind of went crazy and it didn't make sense. And then reports of people who lost millions of dollars on those trades and their accounts are gone. And it's like, okay, those traders are out. So it's like a shift. Anyway, you know, just that's, that's what it looks like to me. So, um, you know, nonetheless, I'm going to try to be aggressive, but also be mindful that we have had some stocks like OCG on Friday that, you know, make really dramatic moves. And this one did a round trip and I was bummed about that. Uh, You know, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, this one, you know, is this going to be the next, is this going to be the next BMR or HOLO? And we don't know at the time when we buy, we don't know. We don't know if it's going to go from three to six or from and then from six to 12 and 18 and 20, or if it's going to go from three to six and back to three. So I guess the moral of the story is for me, at least is that I'm going to trade them when they're popping up and I'm just going to keep a tight, uh, keep a tight leash on it. You know, if it starts to get like too weak, then I'm just going to get out and, and bail quickly and not get married to it. You know, just cut my loss, move on and look for the next trade. So that's the game plan uh, for the week ahead. I'm of course hopeful that we have a continuation of this momentum because it's been a real blessing. And I know some of you guys who have been throwing down some big PLs, um, you know, have been really grateful for it. It's been a much needed hot streak. So I hope it continues. I don't really see at the moment any reason um, 
you know, that it's not going to continue. I think right now sentiment has shifted. Traders are being very aggressive and I think we're, we might be in good shape for a little bit. So anyways, that's it for me. Reminder as always, uh, my results are not typical. Trading is risky. So make sure you manage your risk. Practice this simulator before you put real money on the line. And I'll see you guys um, live streaming first thing uh, tomorrow morning. And hopefully we get some great action. All right. So that's the game plan. I'll upload my recap uh, for Tuesday later on Tuesday evening. And uh, I'll see you guys real soon. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys soon.